we go five running backs i'm gonna bench here heading into week 10 and the first guy is melvin gordon and an obvious guy in my opinion of the denver broncos gordon him and Lindsay look like they're in a split in the backfield and last week it was a joke for both of these guys out of the backfield six carries for 18 yards on one catch for nine yards for melvin gordon of the denver broncos so he had seven touches total and he just did nothing with them this week he's got a pretty good matchup though versus vegas but i can't trust this guy unless i'm decimated with injuries or bye weeks but gordon he's just not getting the job done if he don't get a few catches or a late goal line touchdown he's not getting the work he's only getting eight to ten carries a game and four or five looks out of the backfield and that's not enough volume for a guy I'm going to depend on starting. So Melvin Gordon, I'm benching. The second guy is going to be Daryl Henderson of the Los Angeles Rams coming off the bye week for a few reasons I'm benching him. Number one, I don't like the matchup. Number two, he's banged up with the thigh and quad. He will play, though. And three, Cam Akers, I think this guy's going to take over sooner than later, especially that his team's coming off a bye week. So, yeah, Daryl Henderson... If he's not a guy that's going to catch the ball out of the backfield either. They got Malcolm Brown and Akers there. Like I said, Akers is a guy I think should get more carries. And I want to see get more carries. Because in my opinion, he's the best back there. This game's versus Seattle. You know it's going to be a shootout where the running backs are usually not factors. It's just throwing the ball up and down the field. So Henderson, he'll be the second guy I'm going to bench. The third guy's Josh Jacobs of the Las Vegas Raiders versus Melvin Gordon, who we mentioned then the Broncos. And Jacobs, last week with a nice touchdown, staying out of bounds, diving into the end zone. But this guy, he's maxing out at about 13, 14 fantasy points at most is Jacobs. He don't catch the ball at all out of the backfield. Last week, one catch for three yards, and the week before that, a target. So he's not going to catch the ball. They got Booker there, and Jalen Rashad also, who eat into those passing downs back so Jacobs if he's not getting a big workload or goal line carries he's pretty much not going to get the job done and he's a guy I'm not going to rely on to do that each and every week and Denver's pretty good against the run giving up the eighth least fantasy points to running backs so Josh Jacobs he's a guy I'm staying away from and benching this week the next guy's Antonio Gibson of the Washington football team I thought the breakout was on the rise for him after a huge game versus the Dallas Cowboys for Gibson in week seven where he had 18 fantasy points and 20 carries but last week versus the Giants it was more of limited touches he had nine touches total six carries for 20 yards in the touchdown and three catches for 35 yards and he lost a fumble also but Gibson here the workload ain't there JD McKissick the way these games are going for Washington and the game script where they're gonna pass he they're gonna use him a lot and the funny thing Gibson was a receiver in college but they're not really using him out of the backfield for that it's all been jd mckissick mckissick's the better back right now for fantasy and especially in ppr leagues mckissick he had 14 targets out of the backfield you know smith's a check down specialist so gibson i could see his value definitely going down teams loading the boxes more knowing that smith can't throw the ball that deep so gibson's a bench guy this week but Kizik I would start in PPR but Gibson stay away from eventually Jonathan Taylor and this guy I just see in my leagues he's still started by managers he's still owned in 97% of leagues so people keeping faith in Taylor but the last two weeks have been a train wreck for Taylor in week eight he had only 10, 11 carries 22 yards and two grabs for nine yards I know he had a little ankle injury but he was fine and then last week six carries 27 yards and the Russian touchdown and two catches for seven yards with a fumble loss so the touchdown saved him and the fumble benched him and last week he got out carried again for the second week in a row by Jordan Wilkins who had 11 carries he's not that effective either I think Wilkins so it's just a nightmare in that backfield for Indianapolis but Taylor I can't trust this guy there's three guys there you know, Hines, he set in on the passing and third downs role. And now Wilkins and Taylor, it looks like a split. Even if Taylor didn't fumble, I think Wilkins was getting work. So Frank Reich, he's not worried about pulling Taylor early if he's struggling. So Taylor, he should be owned in less leagues. He should be traded off, like I said, 
in my other video for anything. And this week, he should definitely be benched versus Tennessee on Thursday Night Football. So that's five running backs I'm benching heading into Week 10.